What's up guys, it's Kyle here and in this week's video I'm going to be teaching you how to make a program that detects loose or faulty cables. The program that I'm going to be showing you today checks the communication between all of the motors and all of the sensors attached to your EV3 brick to find any kind of faults. And the faults might be caused by either a cable that has become loose or a cable that is faulty and not allowing the transmission of signals to happen. And so when a fault is detected, the EV3 program that I'm showing you today will throw up a red flag and tell you exactly which port is having the fault. So you can then find and quickly diagnose and fix the issue. This is of a special interest to FLL participants where a loose motor or a loose sensor cable could spell disaster for your program. The program that I'm showcasing in this week's video was created by a viewer on my channel named Bendik Skarpness. Bendik is from Norway and formerly a part of FLL Team Gozen. Bendix saw some of my videos and was inspired to create even cooler versions of my programs. And so big thanks to Bendix for providing these programs to me so I can share them with you today. With my EV3 software open, I can now give you a walkthrough of this cable check program. So right here you can see that all of it gets compressed into a my block at the very end for your own ease of use. And I'll expand this my block in just a moment. But there are eight parameters on the my block. So A through D and then 1 through 4. And these correspond to the motor ports and the sensor ports on the EV3 brick respectively. So this would be motor port A, motor port B, all the way to D. And then there's sensor port 1 all the way to sensor port 4. And these are all logic parameters, so either true and false. And what these do is it allows you to tell the program which uh, ports are occupied by either motors or sensors. So for example, if I had a motor in port A, I would set this to true, and if port B was empty, I would set this to false. And if sensor port 1 was unoccupied, I would put it false. And if I had a sensor in port 2, I would set this to true. So it's just yes or no if there's a motor or a sensor in the port. You don't have to worry about the type, at least not yet. So now I'm going to expand the block. As you can see, I'll click up here, and this will show you all of the programming that's happening inside of the block. So first up, it reads all of your selections for the occupied ports, for the motors, and the sensors, and it stores all of them in variables. So A through D, and then 1 through 4. This right here it just shuts off the light and clears the EV3 display so we can print some information to the screen. And then moving on, now we get to the first check. So the very first thing it does is check the motor in port A. So it'll read your selection for whether or not there's a motor in port A. So if yes, then it'll check. If no, then obviously there's nothing there and it doesn't need to worry if there's a loose cable because the port is unoccupied. Anyway, so if you did select yes, that there is a motor supposed to be plugged into port A, then it's going to test it. And this is where the testing happens. So to test it, it tests to see if the motor's power is greater than or equal to negative 100. So basically what this means in common everyday language is it sees if the motor has any possible motor power happening. So no matter what value you set it to or if the robot is stationary, it's going to report some kind of motor power back to the EV3 brick if the cable is properly plugged in. If not, then obviously you're not going to get a value back. And this, if you're saying greater than or equal to negative 100, because negative 100 is the lowest possible power value you can get with the motor, and it's looking for anything that is equal to or above that, then it's looking for any possible power value. So that's how it checks to see if the motor and the EV3 brick are communicating properly. And if this fails, which is this no case, if this returns false, then it's going to light up the brick lights red, it's going to print A to the screen so you know that the motor in port A is what's loose, it's going to play an alert sound, and then it's going to wait until it can see that power value register again. So it's going to wait until you plug the motor back in and then once that happens it's going to proceed with the rest of the program. And then this yes case is empty because if it's true then the motor and the EV3 brick are communicating properly which means that the connection is okay and the wire is okay and it doesn't need to do anything. So uh, to recap it reads your choice on whether the port is occupied and if yes then it tests it and if the test fails, then it plays an alert. If the test passes, then it just does nothing and moves on to the next one. So next we have 
a check for the motor in port B which is the same exact thing as the motor in port A except you see everywhere it said A now it's switched to B so we can keep going on and it repeats this for motor port C and also repeats this for motor port D so it tests all four motors first and if any of them fail it'll throw up an alert if they all pass then it moves on to the sensors and it starts by testing the sensor in port 1 and much the same way as we did with the motors we read the selection for whether or not port 1 is occupied with a sensor if no then nothing happens and if yes then it's going to test the sensor and the sensor test by default it's set to the color sensors reflected light intensity and it checks to see if it's reading a reflected light intensity that's less than or equal to 100 now again like it's very similar to what we saw with the motor 100 is the greatest possible reflected light intensity so looking for any intensity that's equal to or less than that means the sensor ha can report anything to pass and so if no value is returned then obviously the sensor and the EV3 brick are not communicating and that the wire is not plugged in correctly so that will return a false value and then do much the same as we saw with the motor turn the brick lights red uh, print the number 1 to the EV3 screen so you know the sensor port 1 is faulty play a sound file, an alert sound and then wait for the sensor to be plugged back in and start returning a value again so you can see it's pretty similar to the way the motor works just using a sensor instead then we move on and it does much the same thing for sensor 2 sensor 3 and sensor 4 and then we get to the end of the check program you'll notice that by default all of these are set to color sensor I think if you have a sensor other than a color sensor you might need to change this to something else so let's say for example in port 4 instead of a color sensor you had a gyro sensor so you can compare um, something else like another state and then you would just set that to any kind of value so you could put it to some ridiculous bounds that the sensor will always satisfy no matter what as long as it's communicating correctly which is what we saw that's why it's set to less than or equal to 100 percent on the color sensor and set to greater than or equal to negative 100 power on the motor it's just selecting any case that the sensor will always satisfy as long as it's plugged in no matter what the value is so that's how the check program works we'll go back to the my block now i'm going to configure this my block for use with my Sirius robot so Sirius has three motors plugged into ports A, B, and C and then it has two sensors in ports 1 and 2 so the way I would set this up it's pretty straightforward A would be true, B would be true, C would be true, D would be false because it's empty then port 1 would be true, port 2 would be true and then 3 and 4 we can set to false because they're empty so this is all set up for Sirius and let's see our cable testing program in action Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, click here to check out my new book. It's called Building Smart LEGO Mindstorm EV3 Robots, and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, drop your suggestion in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.